All right, so in the last video, we learned this little mnemonic device, Soka Toa, this abbreviation that might help you remember the relationship between sine, cosine, and tangent, and the lengths of various sides of a right triangle. And if you followed all that, great, but it was a little bit abstract. So in this video, what we're gonna do is do more examples and try to make this make a little bit more sense. So one practical application of what we learned would be if you had a right triangle like you have pictured here, and you happen to know one angle, so this angle here that's labeled 60 degrees, one angle's measure, and the length of one of the sides of that right triangle. So I put a three down here. It turns out that that's sufficient information to completely solve the triangle. And what it means to solve a triangle is to know all three angle measures and to know all three side lengths. So first, kind of the low-hanging fruit is maybe I'll start with the angle measures. As I mentioned in the previous video, the sum of the angles in any triangle has to be 180 degrees. And if I'm using up 90 of them because it's a right triangle, then I kind of have 90 degrees left for the remaining two angles. So if this is 60 degrees, this has to be what remains out of that 90. What I'm saying is this is always 90 minus whatever this angle is here. These two angles are what are called complementary. It just means they sum to 90 degrees. So if I'm using up 60 down here, then T would be equal to 30 degrees. It's worth pointing out that I'm stating these in degrees, but they could just as easily be stated in radians. Maybe I'll do that in the next example. If you're stating angle measures in radians instead of degrees, instead of saying that the sum of these angles is 180 degrees, you'd say that the sum of these angles is pi. At any rate, now I have all three angles. Remember, this means 90 degrees in this triangle. So I can start solving for side lengths. And you can do X or Y. It really doesn't matter. Maybe I'll start with X. And what you want to do is set up an equation that involves this x so that we could solve for it. Well, one such equation is I could say the sine of 60 degrees using Soka Toa, the sine of this angle equals the ratio of the length opposite to the length of the hypotenuse. So I could say the sine of 60 degrees is y over x. But I don't want to set it up that way because then I'd have two unknowns, the letter x and the letter y. I'd rather just have one unknown so I can solve for that unknown. So rather than relate together the opposite side in the hypotenuse, maybe I can relate together the adjacent side of this angle and the hypotenuse. Maybe I could say the cosine of 60 degrees would be equal to, using Soka Toa, the adjacent side length three divided by the hypotenuse x. What I now have is an equation with only one unknown, so I can solve that. The cosine of 60 degrees is something that I know off my unit circle. If you have that memorized by now, great. If not, you can reference your unit circle. I think you'll figure out that this is one half. So I get one half equals three over x. To solve this for x, maybe I'd multiply the x up to this side of the equation and the two over here to get x equals three times two, in other words, six. What I'm saying is that if this is a 60 degree angle here and this is three, then I know that x must be equal to six. I now have x and t and all I have to do is solve for y. Lots of different ways you could solve for y. Let me show you one. One way you could do it would be to say that the sine of 60 degrees, the sine of this angle, it relates together the length opposite, so that's y, to the hypotenuse, which I now have, that's six. So I could say the sine of 60 degrees is equal to y over six, opposite over hypotenuse. The sine of 60 degrees is root three over two, so I get root three over two equals y over six. Solve this thing for y, just multiply the six over to the other side of the equation, I get six times the square root of three over two is equal to y, and this six and this two can reduce, and I could call this three root three for my length for y. I've now completely solved the triangle and I'm done with this problem. However, I wanna show you some different ways we could have done this, not because you necessarily need more ways to do this specific problem, but seeing additional ways to do this could be useful when we get into more challenging problems. The first point I wanna make is the minute we solved for this six, we had two sides of a right triangle. And anytime you have two sides of a right triangle, you really have all three sides of a right triangle because maybe you're familiar with this thing called the Pythagorean theorem which tells you that the sum of the squares of the lengths of the legs of a right triangle equals the square of the length of the hypotenuse of a right triangle, which is kind of a mouthful. So people just say A squared plus B squared equals C squared, where A and B are understood to represent the lengths of the two legs of the right triangle, and C is understood to represent the length of the hypotenuse of the right triangle. So before I knew that this was three root three, after I had solved for the hypotenuse being equal to six here, if I wanted to call this A, I could say that three squared plus, and then if I'm calling this b over here, leave it as b squared, say that that equals six squared, the length of the hypotenuse squared. I could solve this equation for b, and that would give me this value over here without using trig at all. Let's see if it works out. I get nine plus b squared is equal to 36, that's six squared. And then if I subtract nine from both sides of the equation, I get b squared equals 27. So when I take the square root of both sides of the equation, I get b is plus or minus the square root of 27. But because I'm talking about a side length, 
it must be the square root of 27. And the square root of 27, you can think about that as the square root of nine times the square root of three, because nine times three gives me that 27. And the square root of nine is just three. So I get three root three, which was the same answer that I got down here. One more, suppose you don't like 60 degrees. You got your unit circle pretty well memorized, but the 60 degree one, you just can't remember that. What I could have done to start this problem off the minute I figured out that this was 30 degrees before I knew the lengths of either of the legs of the right triangle is, instead of saying the cosine of 60 degrees is this three over this X, right, adjacent over hypotenuse, I could have used this 30 degrees. But be careful, if you use this 30 degrees, this is no longer adjacent. This three is adjacent this 60 degree angle. It's opposite this 30 degree angle. So if I wanna use this 30 degree angle to solve for the hypotenuse when I know this side length three, I cannot use cosine because this is no longer adjacent. I have to use sine because this is opposite. I could say that the sine of 30 degrees is equal to, let's see, here's my 30 degree angle, opposite over hypotenuse, three divided by X. Again, I'm assuming that I don't yet know that X equals six, that I haven't done any of this work. Well, let's see if this still works out. The sine of 30 degrees, well, that's equal to one half. So one half equals three over X. Oh yeah, that's the same thing I got here. Because the cosine of 60 degrees is the same as sine of 30 degrees, it doesn't matter whether I use cosine of 60 or sine of 30. Either way, I get 1 half equals 3 over x, and I can solve and get x equals 6. The point that I'm trying to make here is you can use either of these angles. It doesn't matter, but be super careful. This side is not always adjacent, and this side is not always opposite. Opposite and adjacent are defined relative to the angles. This is always my hypotenuse over here, but if I'm talking about this angle, this is opposite. If I'm talking about this angle, this is opposite. Let's do one more example. Here is another triangle and the prompt, just for shorthand sake, will just say to solve the triangle below. What I mean by solve it is figure out the length of any sides that are not already given and figure out the measure of any angle that's not already given. So maybe we can call this, I don't know, X and Y, and we can call this whatever letter you want. I'll use T, it doesn't really matter. And we can try to figure out what X, Y, and T are equal to. Note that the measure of two angles are given to us. We know that this is pi over four, and because this is a right angle, this is 90 degrees. In other words, pi over two. And when you know two angles in a triangle, you really know all three, because the sum of the three angles in a triangle is always equal to 180 degrees, or pi radians. So if I really wanted to deal in degrees, I could say pi over four radians is equal to 45 degrees. And then I could say, well, 45 degrees plus 90 degrees plus T, must be equal to 180 degrees because the sum of the three angles in a triangle is always equal to 180 degrees. And if I subtract 90 and subtract 45, I get that T is equal to 45 degrees as well. Note, you don't have to convert these to degrees to do this work. You could also do this entire thing entirely in radians. We could say pi over four, this angle measure over here, plus pi over two, this angle measure right here, plus T, which I don't yet know, must be equal to pi. The sum of the interior angles in a triangle always equals pi, AKA 180. Well, pi over four plus pi over two, I can think about this as two pi over four. So if I add these two together, I get three pi over four plus T is equal to pi. And if I subtract three quarters of pi from both sides of the equation, I'm left with just T is one quarter of pi, AKA pi over four. Oh, right, 45 degrees, same answer. I'm just dealing with a different unit this time. Okay, so we've solved for T, but what about X and Y? Well, we ask ourselves which trig function will relate together two sides of this triangle where one is something I'm trying to figure out and one is something I already know. Well, if I wanted to pick on this angle right here, I could say X is opposite this angle. So I could take the sine of pi over four, AKA 45 degrees. The sine of this angle is opposite, which is X divided by hypotenuse, which is eight. Sine of pi over four is X over eight but the sine of pi over four from my unit circle is root two over two. So I get root two over two equals X over eight, multiply both sides by eight, and you get four root two is equal to X. Once we know X, we can figure out Y. There are lots of different ways you could figure out Y. We could say the cosine of pi over four, this pi over four right here, is this adjacent divided by this hypotenuse and solve that equation. Or we could use this angle T down here because we've solved for T, right? T is equal to pi over four. So using this pi over four, we could say the sine of pi over four relative to this angle, this is opposite and this is hypotenuse. Sine relates together opposite and hypotenuse. So sine of pi over four would be Y over eight. Whoa, how can Y over eight be both cosine of pi over four and sine of pi over four? Remember at pi over four in your unit circle, we get root two over two comma root two over two. What I'm saying are either one of these would be equal to root two over two. So we can solve the equation. 
multiply both sides by eight, and we get that y is equal to four times the square root of two. Wait, that sounds familiar. That's the same length that x was equal to. Oh, right, I could have figured that out immediately because these are both 45 degrees. This is an isosceles triangle, and when you have an isosceles triangle, the side length is always the same as this side length. So I could have gotten there without doing any calculations at all. Two more ways I could have gotten there. I could have said that the tangent of pi over four Let's see, tangent relates together opposite and adjacent. So if I'm picking this pi over four right here, the x is opposite and the y is adjacent. So I can say that tangent of pi over four equals x over y. x I already figured out was four root two, so it's four root two over y. And using my unit circle, the tangent of pi over four is just equal to one. So I get four root two over y equals one, multiply the y over to the other side, and we get that y is this familiar four root two again. One last way that I'll demonstrate that you could solve for this is Pythagorean theorem, right? This squared plus this squared equals this squared. So the minute I figured out that x was four root two, I could say four root two squared plus y squared must be equal to eight squared. And if I solve this equation, what I'll find again is that y is equal to four times the square root of two. Again, I'm not saying you need to be able to solve these multiple different ways, but it'd be nice if you could see how any of these different ways will work. It'll add some flexibility for harder problems later on. One last problem I want to show you before I end this video is this guy. It's kind of a scaled down version. We're not solving the entire triangle. We're just finding one thing x, which is this side length here. And you're like, oh, you messed up. You labeled this angle as 35 degrees, but that couldn't possibly be because 35 degrees is not in my unit circle. Well, it is on your unit circle. It's just not one of the 16 memorized values on your unit circle, but that's okay. If we want to figure out what x is equal to here, all we have to recognize is we know four and we want to find x. And relative to this 35 degrees, x is opposite and four is adjacent. So the trig function that relates together opposite and adjacent is tangent. So the tangent of 35 degrees is equal to x over four. So to figure out an expression that represents x, all I'd have to do is multiply both sides of the equation by four, and I'd get that x is four times the tangent of 35 degrees. And you're like, yeah, but what is the tangent of 35 degrees? I don't know the tangent of 35 degrees, but that's okay. It's totally fine to leave your answer as an expression. Like we do that sometimes. When we said that x equals four times the square root of two, it didn't bother you that we didn't figure out what the square root of two is, 1.4 something, and then multiply that decimal by this four. This is a perfectly acceptable answer. It's okay to have expressions as answers. Four root two is the exact way that I could represent this length, which I could only estimate if I wrote it as a decimal. Sort of the same thing happens up here. Four times the tangent of 35 degrees is this length. And it's the best that I can do because at this point in the class, we don't have a way to write the tangent of 35 degrees. So we just leave our answer like this is an expression and that's totally acceptable. What you are supposed to get out of this video is be able to solve a right triangle if you're given one angle and one side, no matter where that angle is and where that side is. And the way you'll do that is by using the sine, the cosine, and the tangent functions. And when you're doing these, you learn that you have a lot of freedom and this Pythagorean theorem can be really useful and cut out one of the steps for you. And you also learn that if the given angle happened to be one of the values on our unit circle, then we can write our answers without any trig functions at all. But if the given angle is not one of the memorized values on our unit circle, well then we have to leave our answers as expressions like this.